YouTube. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be riding the 2019 Road Glide Special thanks to Alamo City Harley Davidson here in the beautiful San Antonio, Texas. Now before we dive too much into the review, I do want to ask that if you enjoy these types of uh, videos, bike reviews, bike builds, group rides, anything like of that sort, please go ahead and click that subscribe button. I will be test riding a good portion of the 2019 models. This is uh, just the start here. So before I hop on, let me tell you just the, the brief overview of the bike. So the Street Glide Special and Vivid Black comes in at just over $27,000 as it sits here in the industrial gray denim. You're looking at about $27,600. Now, uh, what's different on the 2019 models versus the 2018 models? Uh, two main factors. The first being the Milwaukee 8114 putting out 122 foot-pounds of torque and then the all-new Boombox GTS infotainment system. Outside of that, everything pretty much stayed exactly the same. About 836 pounds in running order. Uh, you got your standard saddlebags opening from the inside. Quick detach. Uh, two into one into two exhaust. 130 front, 180 rear tires. Uh, heel toe shifter. Hydraulic clutch, six-speed transmission, engine guards. So um, let's go ahead and hop on the bike. And the first thing I'm going to do is take you through the new infotainment system, kind of highlight some of the new features uh, on that system. First, I'm going to take you guys in the shade because it's about 103 degrees right now, and I don't feel like cooking. All right, that'll do. All right, so as you can see, okay, hold on. Great song, but uh, don't need that going right now. <laughs> so as you can see, they've completely gotten rid of all of the buttons on the GTS system. Everything is integrated. Everything is flat. And I will say, I don't know how well it's showing up on camera, but in person, the resolution on this screen is great. I think they said four times the contrast of the old system. Uh, also, the user interface has been completely uh, redesigned. Also, if you notice, this does work with gloves. So uh, you can get to your music, which, of course, is going to default to F. FM. It's got navigation in it, which now, of course, features the uh, the pinch and zoom, as well as the uh, slide here, which was not uh, a feature on the previous system. Also, you have uh, the phone. Of course, my phone's not connected because this is just a demo bike, but you are able to connect your phone. You can uh, answer your, or you can look at your text message, which I wouldn't advise, but you can see who's calling you, all that stuff. Uh, you also have a quick access to all your bike info. So this, of course, is going to have your, your trip, your odometer, your speed. It also has altitude air temperature, and then uh, distance since last service, as well as uh, trip summaries like fuel used, average MPG, average speed, and stops. Outside of that, uh, just a slew of options here. Uh, you can connect it to your comm unit. It is voice control if you do have the uh, optional voice unit. You have all of your audio settings here. Uh, here's your general settings. So one thing I thought was pretty cool is you can change the, uh, the colors. So it's orange blue, green, red, purple, and that's it. And then um, you can also do high contrast colors, which kind of reverses the uh, the colors on the screen. Uh, keyboard, Bluetooth setup, you name it. Is uh, your navigation menu. You've got uh, a lot more options uh, than you did on the previous system. So overall, just an awesome system. Uh, it does have Gorilla Glass, so it's a lot stronger than the previous systems. And like I said, in person, just the look of it looks better. You can tell it is a better system. So that's the general rundown of uh, the Boombox GTS. But uh, let's go ahead and get this thing on the road. All right, so before we dive into the meat of this, this review, if this is the first video you're watching on the channel, let me go ahead and tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Justin, and I run this channel here on YouTube called Bike and Bird. I have uh, ridden and owned everything from uh, sport bikes, 1000cc sport bikes, to uh, Harley Cruisers. I currently own a 2017 Dyna Street Bob. Uh, I've also owned a 2014 Sportster. That's my two most recent bikes. And I also do want to point out that even though this video is being produced in partnership with Alamo City Harley Davidson, it is in my contract that I am not obligated to uh, give this bike a positive review. So you get my full unbiased opinion. I don't know what this is in the road, but it looks like oil. And if that's the case, that is no bueno. Well, it's not oil, but it's definitely something. Take it very easy on that. <laughs> Alright, so right off the bat, the 114 is just as smooth as the 107. Uh, you don't really feel the power difference of uh, the 114 to the 107 in these lower RPMs. We're going to be uh, touching more on that once we get to the highway. Yeah, 
And these touring bikes just handle so well for being such big monstrosities. I mean, at 840 pounds or something like that, it just, it doesn't feel like it. Oh, it doesn't look like we're going to be getting much highway time here. That's right. I'll be able to get off and take you guys on a better route. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and avoid this. Uh, we'll hit the interstate on the way back. And that 114 gets up and goes. Like I said, in the higher speeds, higher RPMs, you definitely feel it. All right, so overall, just low speed handling. Uh, it, it feels basically exactly how the 2018 does. Uh, it, it's good. Like I said, for an 840 pound bike, these bikes are pretty nimble. Now I will say that with the Street Glide having the fairing fixed to the forks, I don't feel like it is as nimble as the Road Glide where it is fixed to the frame. Uh, that's a big debate in the Harley community. Uh, I feel like you're one side or the other, really. I personally prefer the Road Glide over the Street Glide, but like I said, it's about a 50-50 split as to uh, which one people prefer. As far as wind, of course we haven't hit the highway just yet, but just kind of uh, the, around town so far, I'm feeling a lot more wind on my chest than I was expecting. Uh, it definitely allows more air in this in this general area as opposed to the road glide because it's, it's blocked off. But uh, it's definitely not uncomfortable it's not it's it's nothing compared to for example like a street bob or a fat bob or anything like that uh definitely better than the road king special as well go ahead and run you through the controls here uh this does have a, a little bit more of uh functionality than the previous model thanks to the infotainment system of course you got full control with uh, this little thumb dial here you also have a back button that takes you back to the main screen here uh, other than that everything on this side is exactly the same Moving over to the left side, you also have another a button that controls your volume. All right, don't wanna get a copyright claim here. Uh, then you also have your cruise control button and then uh, voice command over here, as well as your engine cycle button up top. Uh, one thing I did wanna try is the infotainment system. There you go. I wanted to see how uh, responsive this, okay. I want to see how responsive the uh, speedometer was, the digital speedometer. It's, it's pretty good, actually. Showing right now the air temperature is 104, 804 foot elevation. Outside of the digital gauge, you have your standard uh, RPM and speedometer, as well as your fuel gauge and battery voltage. Uh, turn signals come up on the left, I'm sorry, the right and the left pod. Let's try out the brakes here. Of course, we have the uh, dual disc up front and then your standard in the rear. Oh man, they are good. Spike, of course, does come standard with ABS, so that's uh, a big plus for many. Uh, if you've never ridden a bike with ABS, you do have to uh, get used to it, but uh, it's definitely a feature that could potentially save you one day. So I will say that the uh, fairing up front isn't affecting that low speed maneuvering as much as I was expecting it to but I still stand by my statement that it is uh, not as good as the Road Glide. So let's take a second and talk about size. Now, the Street Glides have about a 26, 27 inch seat height. I'll put the actual size right here. I can't remember off the top of my head right now, but uh, they're relatively low bikes. I mean, my Street Bob is definitely a higher seat. I, I believe that a good portion of people could stand this bike up. I would say five, eight and above probably wouldn't have an issue. Just as a size comparison, looking at me on the bike right now, I am six foot two, 225 pounds, and I feel right at home on this bike. The only thing that I would change ergonomically is something that I change, would change on every single bike out there. I don't think there's been a single stock Harley that I've ridden that I haven't mentioned this, but I like a little bit taller bars. Uh, that's basically where, where my ideal bars would be. But having them lower here for people that are, you know, not 6'2", would probably be just fine. Uh, they are not uncomfortable by any means. Yeah, so the exhaust is, is quiet, but it's still got some grunt to it. It still has some balls. So I don't know if an exhaust system would be super high on my list of mods, but with buying the Street Glide Special, you really don't have a lot of stuff that needs 
to be done to the bike. So one gripe I just noticed, sorry to, to kind of break away, but I'm seeing my reflection in this, uh, the rigor of this car. This bike does not come with the LED headlight. So there's something, <laughs> I'm talking about upgrades, but yeah, that's, come on. <laughs> $27,000 for a bike, give me an LED headlight. So one thing I like to mention when I'm at stoplights here is that how much cooler the Milwaukee 8s uh, run as opposed to the old 103s. I know it's probably been said a million times by now in other reviews, but they uh, run substantially cooler. They are partially liquid cooled. Uh, they're not water cooled. Don't uh, take my words out of context. Partially liquid cooled. They have an oil cooler, so uh, it does help keep the bike uh, a lot cooler. They also have the uh, engine temperature management system, or whatever. Basically, it shuts down that rear cylinder if it detects it getting too hot. I don't know if this bike has it turned on or not. That is an option. You can turn it on or off. But uh, for South Texas summers, like I said, we're at 104 right now. That definitely helps. So one thing I noticed on this bike that was different than the Road Glide is I feel like I sit uh, more on top of it than I do with the Road Glide. It doesn't feel awkward. Uh, it's not uh, a negative. I wouldn't say it's a pro either. It's just kind of one of those, those weird things that I noticed. So this vent can be open and closed. Um, I guess that's for if it rains and stuff like that. I don't know what that's going to do. Like every other touring bike, uh, this bike does come with a six gallon fuel tank, uh, putting your range to about 250 miles. Uh, I believe the MPG is about 43. And then of course, it does have the floating floorboards with the heel toe shifter on the left and your standard brake pedal on the right. Uh, very, very comfortable. I also want to give uh, quick kudos to the seats. Harley is not known for making the best seats, that's no secret, but this one is actually very good. With most touring bikes, I would say that their touring bikes have the best seats out of all of them for obvious reasons, but I've never had a complaint with the newer touring seats, so just to kind of shake that stigma, I'm sure there are better seats out there, but I could live with the stock for a while. Also going back to the uh, the infotainment system here, the sun is directly at my back, the sun is shining directly on there, you can probably see some of the reflections on the gauges here, but uh, looking down at the screen, I'm getting very, very, very minimal glare and reflection off of that, so it's even in direct direct sunlight here in the summer, I can still see the screen very well. I wonder if that's the case if we uh, take it off of the uh, high contrast here and take it off of purple here. Yeah, so even if, with it being black, the display is still very good. This thing is leaps and bounds ahead of the old system. The old system was so difficult to use. It was the, the user interface was not very friendly, even as a 26 year old with <laughs> I'm tech savvy and even then it was still it was still pretty rough. All right, so one segment that I like to do on my reviews is top three mods if I were to buy this bike today. Now, this is not things that I'm saying this bike needs or anything like that. This is literally just if me personally, if I bought this bike, what would be the first three top things on my mod list? And for me, it would have to be handlebars. Handlebars would probably have to be the first thing. Uh, just like I said, that's completely personal preference, but uh, it would be very high on my list. Second on the list would be a passenger backrest. I'm trying to feel back here. I don't think it comes with the uh, four-point harness stock. I'll have to take a look at that when I get off, but uh, you can usually get a four-point docking harness for pretty cheap, and then a backrest that it can just uh, quick detach onto there. And then after that, I know I mentioned that the exhaust wouldn't be high on my list, but I think I'm gonna have to put it at number three, just because there's no, uh, I would say it'd be a tie between the headlight and the exhaust, both of which were, are just safety features. In my opinion, uh, if I had to absolutely pick one, it'd probably be the exhaust, just because I personally don't do that much night riding, so having a stock headlight probably wouldn't bug me as much as having a stock exhaust. All right, so we're gonna hop on the highway here and we'll go ahead and run down uh, basically how it does at highway speeds. All right, so even in fifth gear, this bike has no problem getting up to highway speeds with that new uh, 114. Cruising here at 65 miles an hour, I am having to talk a little bit louder just because of the wind noise, but I've had to do that on pretty much every single bike. Uh, my head is definitely not getting tossed around. Definitely very minimal wind buffeting coming off of this windshield. I will say though, it's hitting me at about 
top, about middle of the forehead, I would say. So maybe a taller windscreen for a taller guy like me would be something I would look into. It'd probably cut down that uh, very minimal buffeting even more. Uh, air pressure on the chest is minimal. My t-shirt is barely flapping around. Uh, it is more noticeable than it is on a road glide. These uh, quarter mounted mirrors are actually a lot more effective than I thought they would be. As far as overall comfort on the highway, I give this thing a 9 out of 10. This is definitely a bike that you can go out and just crush some miles on. I'm also getting very minimal wind on my legs. I am wearing just regular jeans. They're not flapping around or anything like that. Pretty much just, uh, very, like I said, very minimal. The bat wing is actually cutting off quite a bit of that. They do have those little uh, flares down there at the bottom that push the wind out of there. But uh, if I flare my legs out to the side, I can feel where that wind is being cut off at. All right, so yeah, after that short little spurt there on the uh, the highway, this thing, as imagined, as expected, did uh, phenomenally well. So the last segment I like to do here in my reviews is, uh, is this a good beginner bike slash who is this bike for? I don't like answering the beginner bike question because I feel like that is going to depend a lot on your age, size, maturity, uh, you name it. There's a big, there's a lot of factors that go into that. So I don't feel comfortable labeling something as a beginner's bike. What I like to do is say, who is this bike for? So at $27,000 as the base level, you're probably looking at about $29,000 out the door. Obviously, this is not going to fall into a lot of the beginner bike categories. Uh, this is also not going to fall into the, you know, people who don't make a lot of money category. $27,000 is a lot of money for a motorcycle. I don't think anyone is discounting that. But the question is, is it worth it? And I don't say this about a lot of bikes. Uh, Harley is known for having a, a little bit more expensive bikes. I mean, they're American. I don't want to say American made because I'm like, oh, they have parts and yada, yada, yada. They're American assembled motorcycles. So they're going to be a little bit more expensive than you say for something that comes from overseas. But I feel with the features that this bike has, with the comfort this bike has, the uh, tradition, everything that comes with this bike, I feel like it is worth that money. But going back to my original point, who is this for? I feel like if you're an, uh, an experienced rider, not so much you have to have tens of years under your belt, but I would say after a couple of years, I would say most people would be able to um, ride this bike, probably even after a year or so, would be able to ride this bike very comfortably. Like I said, for even at 840 pounds, it is a manageable weight. So I would definitely advise that uh, someone maybe a little bit older, a little bit larger, uh, someone who definitely wants to crush some miles. Now, I know I've said crush some miles quite a few times. Don't discount the fact that this bike handles well in the city. I mean, that's pretty much what we've been doing this entire ride is just city riding. And it surprisingly, it does surprisingly well. Uh, I was expecting with the, the fork mounted fairing to be just god awful, but it's actually extremely manageable. All of the weight on this bike is centered very low in the frame and it makes it uh, quite, quite nimble. 